welcome to my channel and today I'm going to be doing my January wrap up. So January was an awesome month. I didn't expect to get through as many books as I have but I am so happy. It means that my TBR shelf is coming down and getting through all the YA I need to get rid of. It means that soon I will be able to buy some books. So anyway I think it would be best if we just get straight on into it. The first book I'm going to mention is one that I actually read on New Year's Eve and that is Fantastic Beasts of Where to Find Them by J.K. Rowling and illustrated by Olivia Lomenex Gill, I think that's how you pronounce it. But as you can probably tell, this is the illustrated version of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and it is so good. Believe it or not, I never read the original version of Fantastic Beasts, so this is my first time reading it, and I just loved it. Especially when you've seen the film Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It's so funny seeing Newt's personality come through on the page, especially in the introduction, because there's a different introduction, and it hints at the Fantastic Beasts film, which I think is really cool. But also you've just got all the illustrations, they're just so beautiful. If you're a fan of Harry Potter you need to get this book because the pictures in it it's just uh, this is probably the most beautiful book I have got and that's including all the other Harry Potter books because these illustrations are just amazing. This was just perfect and I loved it. So the first book I read in 2018 was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I have had this on my TBR shelf for ages and I finally read it and I have no idea why it took so long for me to pick up. This was amazing. I read this in two days, started it on a year's day, finished it on the 2nd of January and it is just so amazing. It's so raw. Angie Thomas just doesn't hold back. <laughs> it's just amazing. I think this really has to be taught in schools because it is so relevant. It's about the shootings in America and about the whole Black Lives Matter protest. It is just great and yeah I think everyone needs to really really pick this up and read it. Then I read Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. So I've been wanting to read this for a while. I've seen the trailer for the film. It looks amazing. So I decided to finally pick up the book. At first I wasn't quite enjoying it. There's lots of 80s references. Me being born in 92, I didn't really get a lot of them. But I still loved it. Basically in the future there's like this kind of oasis. It's like a virtual video game that people live in. And when the creator dies he hides an easter egg. And whoever finds that easter egg basically gets his whole fortune so there's like a whole rush to find it and this follows the guy who finds the first key because you need to find three keys altogether. and I do suggest you read it personally I think the film might be a bit better just because they have put a bit more references that maybe people my age or people younger than me will understand but if you do like sci-fi video games I would definitely give this a go then I finally read Skin Full of Shadows by Francis Hardenage so again this has been on my TBR shelf for ages I this was basically an impulse buy I saw the cover I thought it sounded interesting so it was signed, I thought I'd get it. This falls young girl who has the power to kind of hold spirits in her body after they die and so she gets sent to her aunts and uncles where there's this sinister plan going on, I'm not going to go into it in too much detail just because I don't want to spoil it. She basically runs away because she doesn't want to be part of this but then it's also set between the civil war in England between King Charles and Parliament so you get to see all of that. It's really really interesting and this actually has made me want to know more about the civil war because that's a period of history that I haven't really been interested in because we all know parliament wins and Charles gets beheaded but this was actually really really good I loved it and yeah then I read Get Fit Get Happy by Harry Judd so again this was a really quick read because the majority of it is just pictures of exercises I really enjoyed the beginning of it because it's a little like autobiography by Harry Judd is the drummer from the band McFly which as you probably know I am a huge fan of and I thought I'd read this in January because I thought I might do some exercise because I need to lose weight but I'm too lazy, I'm probably not going to do any of the exercises but if you do want to get into that kind of thing this is probably really good for you. Just have some exercises for beginner, intermediate and expert and you can do them around the house, there's ones where you can do out in the park, there's ones you can do with your children. It is really good if you're interested in that kind of thing. I just got it because I'm a fan of McFly and you never know I might end up doing some exercising. Next book I read was Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dale. So this is a retelling of the evil queen and I got this in a fairy loot box. I did enjoy it but then it wasn't really that special. The problem is it was a great plot. I loved the whole idea of this girl having this kind of demon inside of her and her darkness coming through and it had murder, it had everything you need in a good book. 
but the problem is that I didn't really care about any of the characters. I was reading it going, oh, it's great, it's great, but then when you think about it, I wasn't rooting for any of the characters, so I'm probably not going to be carrying on with the series. I do know this was a debut novel, so I might see what the reviews for the next in the series are like. And if they're good, I might pick it up, because, you know, there's always improvement from a debut. I might pick up the next book, or I might not. It all depends. Then I read December's Fairy Loop book, and that was Everless by Sarah Holland. Now, this was amazing. I think I read this in a couple of days. It's just so different. I thought I'd like this as soon as I read the blurb, but it's basically about a place where time is money. So basically you'd give away your time to buy food to pay the rent and it was just so interesting and then you've got this kind of mythology about sorcerers and an alchemist and uh, I want to go into it in more detail but I feel like I can't because I don't want to spoil anything but if you're looking for a YA novel that is different I would definitely go for this because it's just it is just amazing. I really, really recommend it. And I cannot wait for the next book. I am going to have to pick that up as soon as it comes out. But I don't even think we've got a title yet. So that might be a while. Then I have finally reread a book. I keep saying every year that I want to reread a book, but then I never do any rereads. But I finally reread Lady of the Rivers by Philippa Gregory. So as you probably know, I want to reread the whole Cousins War series and then read the Tudor Court series by Philippa Gregory. So I've already read the Cousins War, but this time I am reading them in chronological order instead of publication order. So if you're reading them in order of time, Lady of the Rivers is first, and then it's the White Queen, then it's the Red Queen, then it's the Kingmaker's daughter, and then it's the White Princess. And rereading this, I've forgotten most that happens. I forgot there's Joan of Arc in it. And I think rereading them in chronological order will make it a bit better. Then I was still in the mood for some history, so I read Victoria and Albert, A Royal Love Affair by Daisy Goodwin and Sarah Sheridan. So if you probably know from the picture, this is the companion guide to the ITV series Victoria. I love the series and I got the book that came in the first series and so I'm glad I got this for Christmas. But this focuses on Victoria and Albert and their relationship and how they basically created like modern Britain and it's just amazing the funny stories in here from Victoria's diaries and Albert's letters like the time where Victoria threw a glass of wine of Albert in front of everyone because she wasn't happy apparently Victoria had such a bad temper and also the fact that people believe she suffered from postnatal depression as well after her second child it's just really interesting and I hope with the other series they bring out these guides because it's getting me more into the Victorian England because that's one thing that I've never really learned about if you are into your behind the scenes as well because there's pictures there's things from the screenwriter about how she created the costumes and how she managed to get everything factual. It's all really interesting and yeah, if you're a fan of this kind of stuff, definitely pick it up. That's it for books, but as you probably know, I started reading audiobooks and I finished Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Maas. This is the sixth book, is it sixth? Fifth book in the Throne of Glass series. I have to say, reading these books, as you probably know, I have struggled with them. But the audiobook made it so much better. The narrator, I think she is Elizabeth Evans, is so good. And I've downloaded Tower of Dawn, which I've just started listening to today. But yeah, I loved it. There are certain bits where you're a bit like, uh, this is just filler, but then there's, ha there's loads of battles. I love the characters, Lysandra. It's probably my favourite. I love how everyone's coming together. You've got the witches, you've got all the fae. Oh my god, you've got people from the novellas as well coming in. I, I'm just liking it and I am excited to see where the final book will take us because I think the next book coming out this year is the final book. Again, we don't have a title, but I just want to see how it picks up because now that it's ending, I'm getting really excited. So I think when the next book comes out, it will definitely be an audiobook that I listen to rather than read. And that's my very long wrap up. How many books did I actually read? I read nine books and then I listened to one audiobook, which I think is pretty cool for the first part of, year, part of the year. And if you want to, you can like this video, subscribe to my channel, all my social media links are below, and I will see you later with a new video. Bye!